In this video, I'll be making thermite grade super fine iron oxide from iron 2 sulfate and sodium hydroxide. This will form iron 2 hydroxide, which on contact with the oxygen in the air will produce the desired iron 3 oxide. To a 1000 milliliter beaker, 110 grams of iron 2 sulfate heptahydrate was added. Next, around 200 milliliters of distilled water was added to the beaker. Following this, a stir bar was then dropped in. The other thing that I needed to make my iron hydroxide was a sodium hydroxide solution. To make this, I dissolved 20 grams of sodium hydroxide in 100 milliliters of distilled water. Once the sodium hydroxide solution had cleared up, I took it off the hot plate to cool down. I then put the iron sulfate solution on the hot plate and turned on the stirring. Once cooled down, the sodium hydroxide solution was added to the iron sulfate. This precipitated iron hydroxide. To make sure that all sodium hydroxide reacted with the iron sulfate, I stirred the solution. It was quite a pain because it was so viscous, so I had to use a glass stir rod to get it started, but then the magnetic stirring kicked in. What remains is a suspension of iron hydroxide in a solution of sodium sulfate. To separate the insoluble iron hydroxide from the soluble sodium sulfate, I filtered the solution. What came through the filter paper was a clear solution. This solution was made up of sodium sulfate and unreacted sodium hydroxide. Despite not showing it earlier, I set up three filtrations to speed things up a bit. This filtration was very slow, so I left it to dry overnight. The next day, the black iron hydroxide appeared to be orange. This was only on the surface and it's because the iron hydroxide had reacted with the oxygen in the air to form iron oxide. Next, I tried to get as much iron hydroxide off the filter paper as I could. This was quite a pain, but I managed to get most of it off. But of course, doing this will mean I lost a few grams of iron hydroxide. Once this was done, I cleaned down the walls of the beaker a bit, and then put this onto the hot plate to dry out. Once my iron hydroxide had mostly dried out on my hot plate, this is what it looks like. A lot of the iron hydroxide had actually converted into iron oxide. I put this into a pestle and mortar to grind it up. After crushing up this iron oxide and iron hydroxide mixture into a paste, it was evident there was still some water left. To get rid of this, I put this onto my hot plate at full heat for about 10 minutes. Next, a plastic bag was labelled with the chemical formula for iron oxide and then that was weighed out. I put my finely powdered iron 3 oxide into the plastic bag and then weighed it. And obviously, what else can I do with my super fine iron oxide other than make some thermite out of it? To do this, I added 6.3 grams of my super fine iron oxide to a beaker. This was followed by about 2.1 grams of aluminium powder. This mixture was poured onto a pan with a very thick bottom and then a magnesium ribbon was added on top. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe. It gives me motivation to spend hours making videos like this, it would be appreciated a lot. Thanks for watching.